Hello and welcome back to another Origins mod showcase. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing the custom Riftborn Origin created by the Discord user known as Mr. Coffee from the Origins Discord server. This is the version 4 version of the actual Origin, as I was meant to have made a video on the version 3 Origin a little bit ago when I first spotted it in the actual data pack section, but I kind of delayed that a few times to the point where now the version 4 actually exists, so hey, here we are, version 4 instead, let's go with it. There's also extra credit to the user known as Zion's side, as well as Just Wang here as always, he seems to be er here, there and everywhere with these origins, so yeah, pretty useful information there. This is an origins mod for 1.17.1 or 1.17, you can use either either there. You might be able to use it in 1.16, but it may also break a few things too, depending. So always be aware of that a little bit when you're doing those type of things. The Riftborn is a three impact origin, meaning it has a maximum impact upon the game itself. And right through the description, Born in the Depths of the Void has teached you how to manipulate space. And hey, before we get into this video, if you've been enjoying a lot of the content that I've been putting out lately, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. There's a lot of overall 116,000 of you guys who watch multiple videos of mine who are still not yet to have actually hit the subscribe button and we're less than a thousand subscribers away from getting the high pixel YouTuber rank which would be a really really cool thing to get so if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button it'd be highly appreciated also hit the like button and also also one last thing I've been streaming a lot on Twitch recently go check me out over there if you really want to see me live and either way let's get started with these abilities let's roll moving to your first ability you've got unstable body due to consistent use of rifts your body becomes unstable Stable, making particles come from you. With this passive ability, your body is slightly transparent in comparison to the normal Minecraft user, as well as you've got the Enderman particles coming off of your body. So you know those purple particles that come off of Endermans in Minecraft and all that? Yeah, you pretty much have those particles vibrating off of you at all times, so it's just a little bit of interesting aesthetic to be added to your character. Moving to your next ability, you've got the Riff ability. This is your primary ability, which is always binded to G by default, but you can always change it in the settings. Same with your secondary ability. You can create a Rift to another dimension, becoming immune to any type of damage, but being unable to interact with some things. Now, when you use this ability, you stay in the same dimension that you were in beforehand. Let's say you're in the overworld, you'll stay in the overworld. If you're in the never, you'll stay in the never, and you're in the end portal, you'll be in the end dimension still. But, what this ability does do is put you in a different pla dimension plane. So, you're still in the same dimension, essentially, but you're in a different plane of existence, meaning things are slightly different for you. You can still break blocks normally, like you would regularly would be able to, but you are able to Phase 3 blocks while in this ability, but beware if your timer runs out while you're in this ability and you're in the ground, you will unphase and you will suffocate to death. So be very aware of how long you're able to be in that ability form. Four, mobs are unable to attack you whatsoever whilst in this form either, as well as you're unable to place blocks whatsoever. You can still attack things yourself, you can still attack mobs and things along those lines whilst in this other plane of existence, but you can't get attacked back, as well as other little bits and pieces along that line as well the fact that you get given slowness while in this dimension as well as everything goes grey. Capiche? You get the gist of that by the basic similarities of it. I'm pretty sure that someone might be able to explain a more in-depth variant of this ability and how it works in more detail in the just comments down below. But that's the basic gist of it. Moving to the next ability, you've got the relocation ability. This is your secondary ability. The secondary key is not normally binded to anything so you have to do this yourself via the uh, controls options but I normally bind it to Y as it's close enough to G to make sense. Either way, the relocation ability gives you the ability to create a rift that will allow you to teleport 30 blocks in front of you. This ability is where I find out that you don't suffocate as this origin because I tested it in survival mode but let's go through it quickly. So this ability allows you to teleport 30 blocks in front of you. This ability is on a 5 second cooldown each and every time you use it so you can use it in pretty quick and rapid reception in between each and every one of them. Now this will teleport you to wherever you're actually looking. You pretty much just look in a direction and you'll teleport 30 blocks in that direction. If you're looking towards a mountain and the mountain so happens to be closer to you than 30 blocks, you will teleport to the interior of that mountain and be inside of some blocks. This is where I find out you don't actually suffocate in walls in the, as its origin, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Just wait a few seconds and then look upwards and press your teleportation ability to teleport into the sky and fall back down to earth, as you don't take full damage either, which will probably be more explained on why and later on in the ability. But this allows you to teleport 30 blocks in front of you in any direction, including directly up or directly down. You might be able to use it to go into any potential caverns that are below you and many other different reasons you can use it for that in other different ideas you can potentially use it for. Yeah, I kind of stumbled there, don't worry about it. Moving to your next ability, you've got the Wormhole ability. Now, this is another one of those active abilities that require you to press a button, but it doesn't exactly need you to get the extra key binds for the Origin Stuff mod. In fact, this actually combines to your Load Hotbar Activator, which, if you don't know what that is, don't worry, I didn't know about it either and how that actually existed to be something you can bind a key to until someone told me in the comment section of one of my most recent Origin ones, I forget which 
one it was precisely, but typically this defaults to the X key. So your X key will activate this ability. If sneaking, by pressing the key, you will teleport to the last entity you hit, otherwise pressing the key will teleport the entity to you. This kind of works in a similar vein to what the puppeteer has, where you can have the ability to teleport entities towards you. This time around you can use, you can hit an entity, you can move away from it, and then when you're shift and holding X, you'll teleport back to the entity. But when you just press X without holding shift, the entity will teleport to you. This could be a good way to have some form of escape or get just in case you get into some form of fight or anything along those lines. Let's say you accidentally fall into the void in the end, you can just hit the X key, you can hold the shift and X key to teleport away to maybe an entity, an enderman that you hit above the ground in the actual end island itself, or maybe some other bits and pieces along those lines. You can use it to teleport faster around when let's say you hit a mob at your actual base, you go over to your friend's base and you use it to teleport back to your base. You can use it to move mobs around, let's say you need to get a zombie up in an iron golem farm, you need to get a villager up into an iron golem farm, you just hit them entity once, uh, make them a little bit angry and teleport them up to this area where you want them to go and so many other useful beneficials that you can do with this ability. Moving into your next ability, you've got the Rift Dodge. Now this is a passive ability, thanks to your ability to rip space, you can dodge some attacks. Now this does have a certain like amount of times that you can use it before it actually runs out entirely, which is about five, diff five to four different hits you take at a one point in time, it will deplete the bar entirely and you have to wait roughly 30 seconds to a minute before the bar goes back to full yet again. But whilst in this ability you will take absolutely no damage whatsoever until the ability runs out and then you'll start taking damage to whatever mobs are around you that will start hurting you. Moving into the next ability you've got the life void. Ripping space has its consequences making you have only 8 hearts instead of the normal 10 that a minecraft player has. This one's pretty self explanatory, you have 2 less hearts than normal. Moving into your next ability you've got shields. Due to your combat style you cannot use shields whatsoever. Again pretty much the same as most other origins that have this ability where you just can't use shields. Shields are non-functional, everyone understands how this works by now, it's the same as it always is. Moving into your next ability though, you've got exhaustion. Creating risk takes up a lot of energy, practically speaking, this just allows your hunger to go down a lot faster than the average Minecraft player, so always keeping that in mind. It's not exactly too drastic of an increase like some origins have, it's just a noticeable one that you'll see where your hunger bar slowly ticks down a little bit faster than what it would normally do. Moving into your next ability, you've got hydrophobia. Because you've got unstable bo body, water flows through you unlike normal players and it actually hurts causing you to take damage in water. Yes, this is the tried and true method of taking damage in water like a lot of other origins have taken. This ability also functions while it's raining so be wary that if you're in rain you will take damage so get the hell out of there as soon as you can. Moving into your next ability, you've got flammable. You're not familiar with fire therefore making you panic about it whenever you're on fire. This is just lame in terms that you take more damage when you're on fire. Moving into the next ability, you've got unstable body 2.0. Choose your instability, you need to have tough armor to hold it together, meaning that you need iron armor that is better than iron, meaning that you're only ever able to actually wear diamond or netherite armor and there is no other armor that you're able to use as this origin. Which hey, it's a different change to what people mostly do with armor nowadays in the Origins mod. Anyhow, let me know, what are your thoughts of this Origin? What do you think of it? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, you tell me your opinions. Do you think it's overpowered? Do you think it's underpowered? Do you think some changes could be made? What do you think of this Origin? As always, a massive thank you to my channel members, my $25 channel members, Hollow the Void and Saturn, as well as my $10 member, Decept, as well as all the other channel members we have. There's over 70 of you guys now, and I really, really do appreciate the support from all of you guys. Make sure you hit the like button down below if you haven't already. Already subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, guys. Goodbye.